Nevada is the last of the live and let live states. I don't care if you smoke weed. Don't bother me because I got, I got a safe full of guns and then I'm in the sex business. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller with Reason TV. I'm here with Dennis Hoff, owner and proprietor of the Moonlight Bunny Ranch in Mound House, Nevada. He runs seven legal brothels in Nevada. Dennis, thank you very much for joining us. Glad you're here, Zach. We're gonna have some fun today. You've brought the Bunny Ranch to prominence through various media outreach efforts, notably your collaboration with HBO for the Cat House series. But this particular brothel has been around since at least the 1950s. 1955 started here. 1955. So what got you into the business and and how did you bring the Bunny Ranch to what it is today? Prostitution's been here since the 1850s because eight miles away was Mark Twain, the Comstock load, all the miners. In fact, a lot of that money went to start the stock exchange in San Francisco and also to support the North in the war. And so there's been a history of tolerance of prostitution. In fact, the mining companies invited the girls in to keep their 20,000 miners busy. So in 1955, the gentleman set this up illegally. He, he did it the honest way, bought off the sheriff and went to work here. I bought the Bunny Ranch in 1992. And I bought it because Andy Kaufman and I used to party here a lot in the old days, mid 70s to early 80s. And one night in about 78, Kaufman said, Dennis, Let's buy this place and make it our den. That's fascinating that Andy Kaufman is in large part responsible for the beginnings of the rebooted Moonlight Bunny Ranch. He's still here. He's still hanging around. I know he is. Is he still here in reality? Well, not maybe not in reality, but he's somewhere. And uh, I, think, I think we're going to see him on his 30th anniversary, which is uh, May 16th of his death. Uh, we, we took a photograph sitting right here in the parlor a week ago. And in the background, there was an image and the girls swear there was Andy. Wow, that's, uh, that's haunting. What kind of lessons did you learn from him and, and Bob Zamuda? The lesson was this, make it fun. The day I took over in 1992, we did a couple things. One, we took down the big sign that said men only. I'm not taking 51% of the demographic of America out of my potential client base. And now we see girls in here all the time. Really? Couples in here. We see women come in here, just want to party and have a good time. Um, the other thing I did is I changed, I, I changed the motto. The motto is Dennis Hoff's world famous Moonlight Bunny Ranch, not just sex and adventure. Sell the adventure. The, the, the sex, sex ends quick. The adventure is, is what, it, what it's all about. And I also sat the girls down and said, okay, new rules. Don't ever party with a guy you don't want to. Just be nice to him. Just tell him you're busy or you're going home with me and let him introduce them to Linda. Uh, don't ever do anything you don't want to because I want a happy, happy buyer, a happy seller, and a repeat client. And don't ever do anything for any less money than you think it's worth. What that does is it makes a willing buyer, a willing seller, a great party and repeat customers, and the girls are having fun. So the, the quality of the girls has been raised 10,000% since 1992. By not having prostitution, you enable the criminals to operate and the politicians to get rich. Now, an example is prohibition. It didn't work. Who got rich? Al Capone, all the gangsters, the politicians that they paid off all the time. That's who got rich. And so you see what's happened. You've taken it out of the hand, hands of the criminals and put it into the hands of the professionals like me. And, and now the liquor industry contributes six billion, billion dollars a year to the federal coffers and so would uh, prostitution, and so would marijuana if they legalized it everywhere. The reason we talk a lot about marijuana decriminalization, it's made some big strides in the last few years. We now have a couple states where it's totally legal. Do you see any parallels with prostitution? Do you think that will follow a similar path one day, or is it gonna kind of always stay in the shadows? It's always gonna stay in the sh shadows. Uh, it shouldn't, but it's always going to. And the reason is because the politicians are hypocrites. If a politician deals with prostitution, if he says he's for it or against it, it just, it, 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 he takes a lot of heat either way. And like when I go speak at the legislature, nobody ever asks me a question. I, I open it up to questions and nobody's got one thing to say. They're, they're, it's almost like they're looking at me saying, Dennis, go away. We love you. Go away. Don't put, don't put me on the spot. Uh, they won't deal with it. Like when I go to the White House press correspondence dinner, 
I'm back there, and I'm a unique character, so the media likes to take me. And I'm back there with people I know, Tucker Carlson, and I'm, uh, Geraldo, and all, all the different guys. And that I do their shows. And it, it always ends up in a conversation with a bunch of senators, one year the attorney general. And we go down, right down the reasons. They said, why should it be legal, Dennis? Well, it eliminates the exploitation of women. The terrible exploitation of women all over America. Sex trafficking is rampant in America. Rampant. Okay? It's terrible. Um, it takes the criminals out of the business. It puts money into the coffers of society instead of taking money out policing this ill. There's no sexually transmitted diseases. In 32 years, mandatory testing, every girl, every week, never a case of HIV. In Las Vegas, the sheriff has just entered his 500 girl in his little black book of girls that arrested working with HIV. So what happens in Vegas it goes back to Des Moines, LA, San Francisco, all over the country. Disease ridden. HIV was up 48% in Las Vegas two years ago. We don't have any problems. We, we just got the answer. And when you legalize it, it takes, it takes the STDs out of it. It takes the drugs out of it. We're zero tolerance. You know, we're, we're, we don't want drugs in here. Where in the illegal world, they fill these young girls up with drugs to keep them working and keep them active. So there's so many reasons. The girls, they pay taxes. That money goes back into, into the county coffers. I'm the biggest taxpayer in this county. I pay a half a million dollars a year in taxes just to operate my four brothels in northern Nevada. There's, these are all the reasons. Now, what I'll say after everybody agrees with me, because they're all going like this. Yeah. Yep, yeah, he's right. Yep, right. Well, let me ask you this, Senator. Would you be the first to stand up in front of your church group or your PTA meeting and say that you're pro the Bunny Ranch style of Nevada legalization of prostitution? It's, it's like Chris Rock told the greatest joke he ever told. Everybody falls out because they will not take the chance for that one little old lady, that Christian woman that just can't understand this and that thinks that it should go away. And it's not going away. One of the senators in your state is a very prominent senator, Harry Reid, and uh, you've had some run-ins with him in the past. He's lately been outspoken against the brothels in Nevada. What are your impressions of Harry Reid and his latest crusade against the brothels? Well, Uncle Harry, we love Uncle Harry. You know, we supported him for a long time. We do donated money to his, his campaign. Harry's an old Nevada. He grew up in the brothels in Searchlight, Nevada. There was 14 of them there. He swam in the swimming pools. He, he ate off the money that his mother earned off the working girls in Nevada. She was a laundry lady. Oh, so he, right. he gets it. He knows what it's supposed to be like, and he knows that in rural Nevada, it's the right thing to do. Now, for whatever reason, he decided to take the shot. And, uh, and, and who knows where that came from? Was it the gaming cartel? Probably. Mm. Probably, because they support him. And so he stood up at the legislature and said, it's time for Nevada to grow up. It's time for us to, to, to get rid of legal prostitution. And then he stopped for applause. Two freshman senators clapped twice. And then they all looked around at each other. And that was the end of it. Yeah. I did a press conference. I went on CNN. And I gave all the reasons why we should have it. And like certain counties wouldn't have a doctor. Little counties. The doctor, that's how he makes his living. Uh, off of the working girls. They wouldn't have a doctor in certain counties. Nye County in southern Nevada, where I have three brothels outside of Vegas, wouldn't have an EMT system. They wouldn't have ambulances. Mm. That's where the money comes from. This, this county, Lyon County, we pay for all the police cars and the communications. So they, they need us. And what, what I said that resonated across America was, Harry Reid is going to have to take the keys to the cat house out of my cold, dead hands. Yeah. Charlton Heston. Nevada is the last state that doesn't want the Fed telling us what to do. Mm. And they're very boisterous about it. We were, we were the last ones to lower the speed limit from unlimited. You want to drive 125, no problem, to 55. We don't want the Feds telling us what to do. Mm. It comes from the old mentality of Virginia City, the old tough miners. And, and truthfully, the counties don't want the state to tell them what to do. It really got to everybody. And they're like, Look, I don't want to go to the Bunny Ranch. I don't need to go to the Bunny Ranch. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing in my life. But Dennis contributes to the county. He makes sure that, that, that we don't have illegal prostitution like Las Vegas. Las Vegas is a cesspool. It's the cesspool of America with sex trafficking. And we estimate that there's 300 girls from 11 to 16 working the streets of Las Vegas at all times. 
sex trafficking at its highest and its worst in America. In California, we've just passed a law called Prop 35, which is supposed to crack down on sex trafficking. And there's been a kind of cultural and political movement to go after sex trafficking, which most people can agree is a horrible thing. But some sociologists and scholars say that prostitution will inevitably lead to sex trafficking. There's something coercive almost about the institution itself. How do you respond to those kinds of allegations? Well, I'm just happy that they're not here trying to Californicate Nevada because their mentality is just garbage. It's, it's, it's just garbage. If you legalize it, why would, why would a, a man going to go to an illegal prostitute and take the chance of being with an underage girl? If he gets caught with an underage girl, he's going to prison for rape. Even though she says she's 18, she shows him an ID that says she's 18, a fake one, he's still going to prison. Now, the federal laws are real tough. If trafficking a girl under the age of 18 can get you life in prison, enforce the federal laws. It, it, it's just showmanship with California politicians say, oh boy, am I, I'm tough on sex crimes, oh boy. They don't need to be. Enforce the laws we have. We need enforcement. Your opponents would say that while maybe the brothel system is a little bit better, you're still controlling these women and you're not that much better than just a street pimp and you glorify the pimping lifestyle and it's degrading to women. How do you respond to that? Well, what I say is come here. Come here and take a look at it. Rita Cosby did, Sean Hannity did, Diane Sawyer did. Take a look at it. Hang around here. Talk to these girls. They're independent contractors. They don't have to work unless they want to. You want to work a week, take a month off? Great. They're, they're real businesswomen. And half of them have college educations. 20% have master's degrees. And a lot of them have giant school loans that they're trying to, trying to pay off. So. Ignorant people will say those type of things without coming here and being involved because once they come here and they look at things, they, it, it changes. It shocks a very Christian religious person that girls could actually like to have sex. Hell yeah, they like to have sex. They, they, they enjoy it and they get paid for it. You know, they, they don't want to work for $38,000 a year uh, in, a, in a square job and retire with a watch 25 years later. If they come in here and knuckle down four or five years later, they'll own homes, they'll have big stock accounts, and they might not have to work forever, ever again. We talked to Dr. Lois Lee from Children of the Night. It's a, it rescues sex trafficked children. And she said that in the brothels, a lot of times the pimps from the streets still have control over the women and they're coming in and collecting the money they're making. And it's kind of an illusion that they're, gain, that they're gaining all this wealth. Is that true? Do pimps still control the women? I've the never ranch? heard this lady's name. I'm the brothel king. Okay. I, I'm the guy. I'm the guy that spoke at Oxford University about this same subject. I'm the guy that spoke at Trinity College a few months ago. I do all the major TV shows. Lois Lee is that is that Superman's girlfriend? I don't have any idea who this chick is. Okay. Get her in here and have her talk to these girls. It, it's not like that. Now, has there ever been a girl that's had a pimp that got a job here? Yes, absolutely. But as soon as the girls find out, they're going to try to pull them off that pimp and say to them, why do you need a pimp? You're in a legal environment. You're in the most famous place in the world. And even if you don't want to work too hard, you're going to make good money. So you see this as almost kind of a step up. It's not a step up. It's 20 stories up. It, it, when you legalize something, it takes all the, the nonsense out of the business and the safety factor. They're doing it because they want to, because they don't want to work for what society pays, or, or they want to have a job where they can make a good amount of money in a short period of time and then go lay, lay on the beach in Hawaii or work on their studies uh, or, or their career in music or dancing or whatever they want to do. She's just wrong. And, and all the opponents say the same thing. It's got, like they get a little playbook, yeah. okay? And they're just full of nonsense. They're just full of it up to their eyes. Come here, hang out for a week, I'll give you open access and then see what you got to say. Are there flaws with the brothel system here, uh, with the regulatory structure? Could it be better? Could it be even more open? Let's go over the regulations. Okay. In, in Nevada, the, Nevada says we have to have certain tests weekly. Mm -hmm. They say that we can't do any radio, television, or newsprint. That's really the basic laws of this. Now, the And you also can't have brothels in highly populated areas. Correct. Over 400,000 
of people. It's, it was done a long time ago, 1972. The laws need to be updated on the medical side. There are better, simpler, less invasive tests for the girls. And we're working on that right now with the head of Nevada Health to change these in the next legislature. Okay? So they don't have to, to, to get a blood test. There's, there's, there's better tests out now. So that's the thing that they should do. Uh, legalization, uh, in legalization, they should have a, a, a way to let us advertise. There, it's not going to be disgusting advertising. No newspaper is, is going gonna, is gonna to put uh, oral sex six miles away. They're not going to do that. You can't have a billboard. So what's the problem? We need to be able to tell people we're here. And my way of doing it, is, because I come from the, the Andy Kaufman, P.T. Barnum School of Marketing, is use media. Get out there. You know, when people watch this show, they're going to be interested. One of my best customers may come from watching Reason TV. That's very possible. It's very, it's very possible. So that we need to lighten up on that a little bit and just use discretion. And, and the media will make us do that. When we were talking about the population regulations, it kind of forces the brothels to be out in the middle of nowhere and it seems a little isolating. Is that an issue? Yeah. Yeah, there, a lot of them are out in the middle of it. We happen to be real fortunate because my four places in northern Nevada are, are 30 minutes from Reno, big population hub, uh, 30 minutes from Lake Tahoe, the jewel of America. So we have a lot of uh, tourism. My three places outside of Las Vegas uh, are with, within 60 minutes of Las Vegas, where there's 40 million tourists a year. Yeah, we need to educate people, and, that, and that's what our HBO show has done. Uh, that we've, we've taken my house, my cat house, into the homes of people in 27 languages in 49 countries. And you know what they do? They look at it and say, that ain't so bad. That beats the heck out of, out of girls that are underage with diseases and drug addicts. Do you think that's an important step to kind of wider acceptance to just allow more people to see it and see how it works? Is Absolutely. that a strategy for you? Absolutely. And I, I, push, I push exposure for the Bunny Ranch and my other, other six brothels and, uh, and sex trafficking every day of my life. That's my agenda. Okay? And uh, if they can just put on my tombstone, the world's greatest salesman and fought sex trafficking and a good friend. That's all I want. Our educational system in America is really screwed up because when guys like Elliot Spitzer, John Ensign, our senator, uh, uh, Vitter from Louisiana, when they can't spell Bunny Ranch and, and come here as opposed to embarrassing their family and, and ruining, uh, ruining their job, Wiener, Wiener, well, come on Wiener, my, my girls can sex better than anybody. I, I sexed with them. I love it. So do you have politicians that come in here? Absolutely. Really? That's why I have a blacked out limo and a back door. So they, they come into the VIP suite and the girls go to them. Big politicians. Mm -hmm. Smart politicians. Look at Elliot Spitzer. Mm -hmm. What a hypocrite. He, he should be in a penitentiary. He was using the services of prostitutes why he was pushing the agenda of prosecuting prostitutes. We talked a little about the politics of Nevada. I think it's probably safe to describe you as fairly libertarian. Um, I mean, you ran a group called Pimpin' for Paul, Ron Paul. I'm not sure how he reacted to that. Um, could you talk about your personal politics? Do, you, do your ideas about legalizing prostitution extend to other areas of human activity? I try to stay out of politics, you know, because, uh, you, you know, I'm a businessman, number one. And if, if you stay away from politics and religion, you don't irritate anybody, okay? Now, I, I kind of like the way Ron Paul thought, okay? I'm, I'm a libertarian, there's no question about it. It's just like John Stossel. What is it about Ron Paul that you like? States' rights. Make your own decisions. He doesn't want the feds dealing with the states. And that's what Nevada is about. States' rights, county rights, make it, letting the community make the decision of how we should be governed. Nevada's the last of the live and let live states. I don't care if you smoke weed. Don't bother me because I got, I got a safe full of guns and then I'm in the sex business. You know, I, I, don't, I don't care what your religious beliefs are. I don't care about any of that. You, you want to be a survivalist and live in the desert? Uh, you want to raise tigers? I'm okay with it. You know, just, I don't want to bother you. You don't bother me. You bother me, now we got a problem. Yeah. You got an enemy. And Harry Reid found that out real quick. And that's why 24 hours later, he had nothing to say, not one thing to say about the brothel industry, and has never spoke about it again after, after I did that press conference. The benefit of 
states' rights or federalism is that you have experimentation. The states are a place where you can try out policies and see what works, what doesn't work. Nevada is very unique in what they've tried out. So what can other states learn from uh, what's, what's gone on here? Well, the other states learn. Like a few years ago, I, I had 14 different countries come in here. The State Department brought in 14 different countries, primarily Southeast Asian countries, to let me teach them how, how we do things. Because it's a problem worldwide. Exploitation of women is a terrible, terrible thing. And so they want to see how, what the controls we have. I spoke in Amsterdam. People don't know that in, in Amsterdam, sex was for sale for 700 years, but it wasn't legal until like 2000. I went over there and helped them implement the Nevada rules and, and the suggestions to make it better. They listened to a lot of it. They missed a couple of key points. And now they have a lot of sex trafficking there. They have a lot of sex trafficking from Bulgaria, uh, Romania, Moldavia. What were the key points they missed? Somebody has to check the identification and make sure it's real. Oh. To make sure it's real. Because all they do is they come in and the brothel, they rent a window to somebody. All they have to do is have identification. They don't ask them whether they're, they should, can be there legally. They don't ask them if the identification is real. Who am I? I can't check identification. In our system, a girl goes to the doctor, gets a complete checkup to, to make sure that everything's okay. Then she goes to the business license department and they fingerprint her. They run a background checks, looking for wants, warrants, and that the identification is good and that she is either an American citizen or has the right to work in our state with a work permit. Our system is flawless. We just don't have any problems. And that's why we don't have any underage girls in here. Is there a way to do that outside of um, having a brothel? I mean, I know a lot of sex workers are interested in just advertising their services online and being independent contractors in that way. Do you see any way forward in that direction? They're idiots. They're idiots. It's not going to happen like that. Huh. A doctor would like to do the same thing. Gall better replacement, $600. I'll do it in my apartment, in my kitchen. It's not going to happen. The, the, this is a business. It has to be in a zone or zone commercial. It has to have controls in it. And these girls, and typically it's the ones in San Francisco, the old radical gals in San Francisco who are very mouthy about this, but you know what? I've been watching them for 30 years. They've never made one step of progress, not one, because they don't want anybody telling them what to do. I don't want to get it. The health check, the health check uh, uh, should be optional because I know I'm clean. Well, that's bull. We talked to one of those San Francisco prostitutes that you're talking about, and I think they would say that this is, that's a very self-serving statement. Of course you want to keep the brothel model as the only choice. I'm just saying that the brothel model works. Right. Now, could it, could it be set up where it's legal for everybody? Yes, but it, it, it has to be business licenses health checks, somebody to monitor it. It has to be in a commercial environment. You have to have health inspectors check it. And they don't want any of that. So this is the best we got right now in, in America. You know, 18 brothels for 330 million people. So there's always a fear when prohibition of anything is ending that people are just gonna jump on and society is gonna slowly crumble. Everyone's gonna start smoking the marijuana cigarettes or going to the brothels. Their morality is just gonna collapse beneath our feet. Um, do you think that would happen with the legalization of prostitution? No, not at all. It, you saw it in prohibition. It didn't ruin America. Hmm. What it did is it, it controlled the quality. They're paying $6 billion a year to the federal government for fees, it didn't happen that way. It's not going to happen that way with marijuana. In fact, in, in, in Holland, per capita, there are less smokers than we are in America. Why? Because everything my mom ever told me not to do, or my wife ever told me not to do, or girlfriends I've had told me not to do, guess what? I did it. You know, don't, don't go out with her. I don't want you sleeping with her, Dennis. I'm on, I'm on her. Tell us not to do something. We do it. People are afraid that there are community is going to turn into Amsterdam or they look at Las Vegas and they're like, I like to visit there, but I don't want to live there. Uh, do you think that that's a legitimate fear? Well, Las Vegas has got the problem because it's illegal in Las Vegas. And, and look what you got. Mm -hmm. you, you got 2,000 girls a month being arrested. Lots of guys being arrested. Their life's being ruined. They're getting robbed. They're getting drugged. Uh, they're, they're getting hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you got now. Okay. It's disgusting. Las Vegas is the ses sexual cesspool of America. 
Make no mistake about it. When you legalize it, if you, if, and Mayor Goodman recommended we did that, but it's got to go in front of the legislature, and they're not going to allow that. So if, if you took an area, you zoned it properly, you had 10 or 15 brothel owners in there, they put millions of dollars in license fees back in there, you get rid of the vice squad, which spent $7 million policing prostitution last yeah. year, and they're raising it this year. And that would cut out the guys in the orange vests with uh, flicking the cards at yeah. you? Yeah, have a girl to your room before you can get a pizza. Sure. Yeah, th those guys would all go away. You have almost a majority of the market share of the brothels here in Nevada now with your seven uh, businesses. What do you see as the future of prostitution both here in Nevada and across the United States? I see the business getting better. We're, we're doing great. Um, I see it, it growing as tourism comes back. I see my seven brothels uh, being a publicly held company with the girls being involved in it, all of us shareholders in the company. Hmm. I don't see it going to other states, but it's not going to happen anywhere else in America because America, they're too much of hypocrites and the politicians are looking out for themselves. They'd rather, they'd rather turn their back and let an 11-year-old girl uh, be sex trafficked in their own hometown then legalize it. I debate them. I debate them. It's, it's typically a 55-year-old Christian woman, and God bless her for her beliefs. Mm -hmm. But when you say to them, what's the alternative? They don't, they're stuck. They just want it to go away. Hmm. It's the oldest profession. It's not going to go away. So give me an alternative. And th they just don't have any. So let's license it and, and control it until until everybody doesn't want sex anymore. I Maybe mean, we'll evolve into that someday. I, I don't think so. What's the alternative? That's something we ask ourselves a lot at Reason. And I want to thank you, Dennis Hoff, for sitting down and talking with us. It was great uh, meeting you and great talking. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks. For Reason TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller.